We've been gearing up to launch the store page for our upcoming game Guild Architect soon, a little bit more patience, which means that I've been obsessing quite a bit about the perfect store page. And on top of that, I've also been doing some streams recently where I looked at your games and your store pages to see at, hey, what are some pieces of feedback I would give? And throughout that process, I noticed that a lot of you guys have some mistakes on the store page. There's a whole bunch of categories basically, but pretty much everyone has like something wrong at a certain point. And in this video, I just want to go over what are those key mistakes that I see on your store page. If you've got a store page up right now, I want you to pull it up like next to you when watching this video and just look at, okay, what are these things that Marnix is talking about? Do I check them? Yes or no? Or should I change something? If you're planning on making a store page, make notes as well, because these things will not individually make or break your game success, but these are still very important often to getting more wish lists and getting more marketing success, basically. And let's start with the biggest one that is also the first point of contact for most of your player base, and that is your Steam main capsule. This is the like image that you see when you're scrolling on Steam of like all of the different games. You just see the main capsule and the title of the game. And that's all of the information you as a player get. Maybe it's like categorized in a genre, but your capsule is really going to be the driving force for new people who have no idea what your game is about to click on your game. It's very similar to thumbnails on YouTube, for example, where you want to stand out and really convey to whoever is browsing Steam what your game is about. And this is very hard. These capsules are generally pieces of art that signify what the genre is about as well. Maybe you have an industry automation game, in which case you'll have like factories and conveyor belts on your capsule, or maybe you're a sci-fi strategy game in which you have like the spaceship ass is what it's called, like the back end of a spaceship blasting off in the distance. Those are very important things that can visually showcase what is this game's vibes and what is the game gonna be about. And my biggest piece of advice here for you is if you are not a like S tier correct artist, I would generally advise you not to try and make your own capsule. I know it can be very incentivizing because it can cost a bunch of money. It can cost generally between 100 and 300 or $400, depending on the level of artist you want to go for, if you want to get a piece of capsule art commissioned. But the thing is, even if you're a above mediocre artist, your competition on Steam, pretty much all of those games are using really solid capsules and you just need to be able to get on that level as well. Because especially on that first interaction point, you can't be below average, basically, compared to everyone else around you. Having a really good piece of art as your capsule is probably going to be one of the most important things you can do, especially if your actual like game art, like the in-game visuals, isn't fully there yet your capsule is going to do the heavy lifting. And all of you guys also wonder like, hey, who is the artist for Forge Industries capsule, like our previous game, or for any other capsule, like where do you find those? Because it can be a bit more of a niche. And I've actually got something for you there. If you head down to the description of this video, like the first link, there's going to be a Google sheet that I have compiled myself over like the past few months, reaching out to various different capsule artists, asking for samples, asking for pricing, how to contact them. And I'm pretty sure that if you just go and take a look through there, you're going to find a capsule artist who who matches your style and they are professionals at what they're doing. So you've got someone to click through to go to your store page, which means your capsule has worked, which is great. And now you have about 300 characters to sell your game basically to do a mini pitch of what's the game about and what is the player going to be doing right on top of that store page. A lot of people won't scroll down, they will just purely read the short description and then decide, hey, am I actually interested in this or am I moving forward? This is something where Honestly, I feel like it's not that hard to write these. The big important thing when you're making these short descriptions is to use a lot of verbs. But to be honest, a lot of these tips from these videos also come from Chris Zukowski's like ultimate store page course, which if you have more time, it's completely free. I'll link it down below as well. Go and watch it. It like goes into really depth. How do you formulate these short descriptions and things like that? The important thing is using verbs and action words, basically. So instead of just explaining what the game is about and be like, oh yeah, it's a third person top-down RPG or whatever, use verbs as to what you as the player will be doing in that game. You'll be crafting, you'll be adventuring, you'll be exploring, you'll be fighting, you'll be racing, whatever. Using those verbs really signifies to the player, okay, this is the game and these are the actual things that I'll be doing in the game. Does that vibe with me or not maybe. Writing these short descriptions can sometimes be a little bit daunting, but honestly, don't be scared of it. 
write a few of them. Once you've written that first sentence, it's really easy to like keep building off of it. Don't ask ChatGPT to write it for you. Like maybe you can get it started, but generally it uses words that no sane human being uses. Like write these things yourself. This goes for any text on your store page. Maybe ask for an outline at most, but always write your description yourself because chances are you're not good enough of a prompt engineer to ask a large language model to write a short description for you. Don't be lazy. This is really important that you make this human and that you make this be right. And then in line with those verbs and showing the player what they're going to be doing is actually showing the player what they'll be doing through things like a trailer. And this is something that I have also changed my stance on over the past few months from talking to marketing people, asking them how to get the most out of your Steam pages, where in our original, like getting started with Game of in 2024 video, I was like, just get the Steam page up as fast as possible. Get those five screenshots, the short description, the capsule, and you're done. I'm actually wanting to like amend that statement and I think you shouldn't go public with your Steam page until you have a minimum viable trailer. That's the term Derek Liu also gives it, who is like a trailer editor. Basically, you want to have a 30 second sort of trailer. It doesn't have to be a full like professional trailer. It's just more to show the game in action because screenshots, they don't convey the game's space, the game's vibes as much. Having a simple piece of video where you play your game with like some good music that fits the vibe behind it and you showcase like different scenes kind of like a crappy version of a like real trailer is already going to help you immensely in conveying what the game is going to be about, especially with like certain genres like puzzle games, for example, words aren't always the best way or screenshots aren't the best way to convey what the game is about. Just a few seconds of like gameplay can often explain more than a long ass description and some screenshots. The trailers, you can go much deeper in it as well, but you should always have some video of your game on the store page. If you want to learn more about trailers or you're just interested in more of the like in-depth topics about game development, we have some great videos over on our Patreon because we upload four videos every month that are like more in-depth and more niche specific with some recent ones that I did, for example, such as trailer breakdowns, how to structure your trailers. Also yesterday we released a video on like our marketing strategy. If those are things you're interested in, head to the description down below as well. There's a link to our Patreon. Really, it's going to give you an immense amount of value if you're planning a release in like the next six months, basically. Now you've got that trailer, which is already great, but Steam also still requires you to have five screenshots. If you've got enough gameplay to make that mini trailer, Getting the screenshots shouldn't be that hard, but here I once again want to ask you to find enough variety in the screenshots because you want to showcase as much of your game basically as possible. And if you have five screenshots that are all in like the same level with the same color palette where you're using the same gun, for example, that is not really going to look that interesting. Whereas if you have like different kinds of environments, I think Forge Industry does this really well, where we have the snow biome, we have the islands, we have the regular plains and we have the desert. This adds a lot of variety and these are things you can very easily showcase through your screenshots. So make sure there's variety. Also Steam suggests and I also suggest you don't take screenshots of your main menu. If you really can't get those five screenshots yet and you have to get like your main menu or your inventory, for example, as a screenshot when the inventory doesn't really matter, don't bother with it yet. This probably means that you're still too early in your development process to really launch that Steam page and hope for a lot of success. And this covers all of the parts at like the top of your Steam page without a player having to scroll down their browser basically. And this brings us to the long description. So we've had that short description at the top where it's just a very quick pitch of the game. Now you can talk a bit more about the different mechanics, the different features and all the things that make your game awesome. And here there's no real length limitation. The important thing here is that once again, ideally don't have too much text and instead replace text with GIFs. Instead of talking about like how you can build your own little city, why not make a little time-lapse GIF of your game where you have like a little city that is like expanding, for example. Those are much better visual indicators. Also, I'll like put a store page with like no GIFs on the screen right now. This looks boring. It's too static and your brain is not interested in this. Whereas if you pull up a store page that has a lot of GIFs and a lot of movement, these are things that are way better at explaining once again what the game is about, how will the gameplay look, how will the player feel most likely when they are playing the game. It's much easier for them to imagine being in the game. These GIFs, very quick side note as well, always make them 600 pixels wide. That is the maximum Steam supports. And otherwise you're going to have like weird alignments where it's only aligned to the left and it doesn't take up like the full width of the store page. Just simple things that are very easy to get right and make your Steam page look more professional. Also a small side note, please let like at least a spell checker validate your store page description because typos, 
doesn't really entice the most confidence that you are a developer who knows what they're doing. It takes like five minutes or something and it just makes sure that your text is clean and it doesn't contain a whole bunch of grammatical errors, especially if English isn't your first language that's okay, but then use the tools that are available for free online to make sure that you don't make like simple mistakes. And then the last thing that also is very important in my opinion is tagging your game. Every game that you have like in the Steamworks dashboard, you can set up to 20 tags that are linked to that game. So that could be things like, hey, it's an indie game, it's a single player game, it's a 3D based game, it's a first person shooter, it has like a focus on economy, it's set in a Dungeons and Dragons like team. Those are all different tags that you can assign on Steam and it will allow Steam to categorize your game basically. And there's a section at the bottom of a store page where if you're like, hey, I'm interested in this game, but I want to see some other games that fit this vibe, you can click that more like this button and you can see different games that are because of those tags similar in style. And this is a way that you can get more visibility for your store page as well. Because if someone likes Factorial, for example, well, they'll probably also be interested in games like Satisfactory because they have a very high overlap in tags. So it's very important to set up the tagging as correct as possible. So Steam can just suggest your game to more people where it actually makes sense. Also later on for things like the discovery queue, these are things that matter. The important ones here is don't put generic tags like indie or casual or puzzle all the way at the top because the higher your tag is, the more priority Steam will give it and you don't want it. You want the most specific tags ideally up top. So if you're making a management game, then put the management tag or the economy tag or the city builder tag as high as possible because those are way more niche and way more specific basically and put the like more useless tags such as single player, indie, casual, whatever, all the way at the bottom of the priority. So they still have the tag, but it's not going to impact Steam's algorithm that much. And those are like the big things. I've made some videos before as well about store pages. Also, if you want to see more about store pages, you can look at some of our previous streams. I'll also link in the description a video from CodeMonkey, who did a collab together with Chris Zukowski from How to Market a Game, talking about what is good about store pages, what is bad about it. There's a lot of information in that that you will probably be interested in. This is just more as a quick starting point of the most common mistakes that I see. Apart from that, we're game developers who are working on our own games. If that is something that you're interested in and you want to follow along to see what else are we learning about game development, how to market your games, like pitfalls of game development, then be sure to head down below and subscribe as you'll get notified whenever we upload these videos and we see the number go up, which makes me happy at the end of the day. That's all I really have to say. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.